Welcome to the Shenandoah Valley cooking class. I'm Jay Langston, the executive director of the Shenandoah Valley Partnership. And today we're at Fishburn Military School. And I have with us three cadets who are going to help us preparing our pull apart bread that we're going to make today, which is made with little Debbie who makes these about 10 miles away in Stewart's draft. So we're going to use some local products to make this. Guys, you ready to start making this? Okay, we have done a little bit of prep and this is what I've told you about ahead of time. If you want to cook along with us, please have some of this done. We have already melted our butter, honey. It's a quarter a cup of the butter and it's a quarter cup of honey. And the recipe is so simple. And I'm going to mix that, and then I'm going to hand this over to one of our cadets. Quarter cup of brown sugar, quarter cup of granulated sugar, and a teaspoon and a half of cinnamon. That is it for this. Cadet Frankson, I'm going to give this to you and let you stir that while you start emceeing. Okay, now we need to start cutting up the honey buns which are part of this. I am going to unwrap them, and then I'm going to let you start taking them apart, and you can hand the wrapper to me. You, I'm going to give the biscuit dough. You go right ahead. <laughs> I trust you with the knife. Being a cadet, I'm sure you've got this completely under control here. And we're doing this immediately because this takes 45 minutes to prepare and that, there we go. Take the dough and you're going to pull this apart in little pieces. And as a matter of fact, if you want to lay this part of it down, you can put part of it there. And then you're gonna throw it, those pieces into that bowl. We're going to have fun with this because we're going to have so many people up here trying to put the stuff in the same bowl. And while you're cutting, I'm going to reach around and put this in. And when you cut these into small pieces, I want you to throw them in there. Sir, does this look good? Yes. And we're going to have you pour that all on top here in a second. Do you need to be closer to the bowl? We can get the bowl closer. Why don't you stand in there? We will, we will figure this out. <laughs> there. And if you need some help, I can help you too, because we're going to. Because this gentleman is moving so fast with the cutting up the honey buns to go in here. And, and really, it's the large pack of the honey buns. It's nine. You just cut them up and throw them in there, and then the the dough for the biscuits. Give me part of the dough. Yeah. You're the best. <laughs> and just about about inch size chunks to put in there. And I have made this recipe three times and it is so simple. Uh, just don't count the sugar that goes in here. Uh, that's the only downside. Sir, this glaze smells amazing. <laughs> Thank you. That is what helps make it so good is because of that glaze. And all we did is it's a quarter cup of the butter, quarter cup of the honey, and like I said, then the, the cinnamon. And that's all it, it takes. I just melt it in the microwave and get it so that it's ready to pour over the bread mix. And you're gonna see how in a second, well, more than a second, in another minute or so, how easy it is to actually mix this up. And then we're going to put it in the pan. And you don't have to continually stir it, but it won't hurt since it's starting to, to cool a little bit. Sometimes we have like cinnamon buns at Pittsburgh. Uh, in the mess hall, and they're really good. I they're like one of my favorite desserts that we have. Yeah, absolutely. 
These guys, just so audience knows, these guys are going to be rejoining us on the program later, and we're going to talk about the life. They've already, a lot of times we have great conversations before we're ever on the program, and I want some of what we talked about uh, to be on, on the program. Uh, as well. And so uh, Todd Livick, who will be joining us in a few minutes, he is here and he is going to be with us and asking some really good questions about cadet life. But in the meantime, he will uh, be on here as soon as we get this done to talk about Fishburn and some of the history uh, here. And you're almost done. That's, that's great. Make sure it's coming apart. And I have Oh, of course. One, the, one a knife, and I hit the knife for trying to put things in. All right. If you want to go ahead and pour the honey butter mixture in there, Cadet Frankson, I would appreciate it. Let me do this one for you. There you go. And I'm going to get rid of this stuff. Put it in the trash can. And as you can see, there is no magic to cutting up the honey buns into the chunks that we need to, to put in there. And that is perfect. And now let's put all of that in there and we will finish. Nice. There you go. Perfect. Okay. We've got the, I'm going to step in between you here. Uh, would one of you like to spray the pan? You think no. you can do it? Have you ever done it? No. Once. Once. <laughs> it's, it's not that difficult. No. This is spray. baking spray. And so just spray it in there so it's around sort of all of the inside and while you do that then basically this doesn't take a lot of effort you notice that as normal i am i do not have make sure you hold it up this way and you can pick it up there you go make it easy smarter not harder <laughs> working smarter not harder i wonder if where they might have heard that todd do you have any comment on that todd's off screen watching and, and filming the the cadets uh this does not take a, you know, a, a major stir. That is perfect. It'll work. We'll get it out of there when it goes into the oven. And literally just a big bowl and this, and it is, it is mixed. It's, it is almost there. Like I say, you do not need to over mix this because it will blend and now in the sprayed cooking pan, you actually just, just put it in there and, and compact it into the bottom. Not hard, but enough that it holds together. And you can see the biscuit dough in there with the honey buns. Pack that down. Looks like we've got more than to fill in there almost, doesn't it? <laughs> Anywhere close to like the uh, cinnamon buns that the uh, cafeteria makes here? That's what it smells like. <laughs> it does smell <laughs> and here we go. I'm just going to put the last bit in. And then we're going to pack that down. And then one of you is going to volunteer to go and put this in the oven, which the oven is not in this building. So we're actually doing it uh, in the, is it the cafeteria we're, we're using, Todd, for this? The mess hall. But mess hall. Mess hall. How dare I call it a cafeteria? Uh, so, guys, we're done. We appreciate it. Okay. Who wants to be the runner? I'll get that, sir. Thank you, Cadet Pierce. I appreciate it. Thank you.
Frankson, and we are going to excuse you right now. And I'd like to introduce Todd Leibig with Fishburn Military School. Thank you, guys. Oh, and I'm going to start my timer. 45 minutes, right? 45 minutes. And I had it here. Technology. It's a new phone. That's my, my story, and I'm sticking with it. There we go. Congrats. Right. And I don't even think I have sticky hands. It didn't. That's nice. <laughs> but I noticed they were passing it around the whole time that you were making it. Yes, they it, were. So they were making sure. Uh, Todd, thank you uh, for hosting, and I really appreciate it. We have been we have been talking about this for some time, trying to have yeah. uh, a time that we could do it. We were going to plan it for the summer, but that didn't make sense because the cadets were not here, and we want them as an integral part of the the show. Uh, talk about the history. Talk about Fishburn. Mayor, right. our our something that we like to talk about in the valley is that we have a lot of assets that are only found in larger areas a lot of times, but yet we have tremendous educational assets here. So with, with that teeing you up, I will let you take it away. All right, well, thanks, Shane. I'm glad you guys can be here. I'm glad you got to meet the cadets. <laughs> yes. Were they great yes. or what? They are, they they are seventh fantastic. seventh and eighth graders yeah. that are telling you what to do, actually. So it's Exactly. Of, and cool. had, before we got started, <clears throat> suggestions on how we can do this even better, which I really and, appreciate. And, and you listened. I know <laughs> And I listened. <laughs> yeah, well, because the ideas were good. Uh, but anyway. Uh, All right. Uh, so Fishburne Military School, founded in 1879. So we're fast approaching our 150th anniversary right. here in 2029. So Professor Fishburn, James A. Fishburn, uh, like I said, founded the school in 1879. Uh, and he had a vision uh, to make this a school for boys, uh, where boys could come and grow leadership, uh, great instruction, uh, and have a learning foundation that would propel them into the whatever they do next yeah um, so for 145 years we've been doing that we're small in nature it's always been small in nature uh, we you know we had Stanton Military Academy we had Augusta Military Academy they were big Fishburn has always stayed small when I say small yeah and so yeah define small for so the sweet spot is 175 uh, we've been 225 I think that was the, the height right now we're 106 uh, but we're headed up, yeah. and, and I yeah. see Fishburne having 150 to 175 boys uh, that will be going to school here. Uh, and, and let me tell you, what the boys get is, like I said, the foundation, the regimental process. Because I went to Augusta Military Academy for eight years, and I was a mess as a fifth grader. And now all of a sudden I'm getting this instructional, you know, how to do life and how to figure yeah. things out and how to be respectful. Uh, the duty, honor, country concept. Because uh, that's a big thing. And you know, our boys, we pride the fact, and you saw it here today. Yes. Sir, they shook your yes. hand, look, looked yes. you in the eye. Firm handshake, yeah, it's, looking it, me in the eye. It's great. Yes. Yes. And this year, uh, we took their cell phones away. <laughs> so as you can imagine. I, I, I can imagine that was probably traumatic for some. It was, and even for yeah. some of the parents. Yeah. But the good news story there is they do get it back on the weekends, and if you're in a leadership position, you get the phone. So th that's a reward for being a leader, doing the right thing, and leading from the front, even when no one's uh, watching. They get it back on the weekend, but what I've seen this year is when you ask somebody, hey, make this happen, they have to actually go and make it happen in person. Not doing a text, not doing you know an Instagram or whatever to Snapchat. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they can do it in person, so it, yeah. it it's great, and it's it's really nice to see these boys growing up. I have I have several questions I want to ask you, and some of which you have alluded to already. But who are the boys that come here? You know, and how do they attain leadership positions? Okay. Great question. So, our boys come from 19 different states across this country oh, and two okay. countries, to include Mexico and Honduras. 
Uh, the five states that where the most boys come from are Virginia, of course, yeah. uh, North Carolina, Maryland, Pennsylvania, and Florida. Interesting. Yeah, Florida, and okay. we even have boys here from Washington State this year. And you say, how do we do that? So we work with WHSV. So they've been doing a lot of our push. That's our local television station. Our local television yes. station. And they're wonderful to yes. work with. Yes. Uh, and, and they've enabled us to be able to reach an audience, whether it's local or even in Washington State. It's kind of amazing. Uh, the roots that we're now getting to tell our story. Because, you know, you talk to the older alums and how did they find out about Fishburn? Yeah. Well, maybe the back yeah. of Boy's Life. You know, a small little ad, but that got them here. Uh, now the boys have a choice, and they're a part of the, you know, the process. Mm -hmm. And, you know, here within the last uh, two years, we changed our brand. And, you know, when you change your brand, you, you, you change it to make sure that it's something that people can connect with. And our tagline is, we see what's great in you. And I think we could see what yeah. was great in those young men up here today. And yeah. it's, it's great seeing that. And it's just great being a part of seeing... You know, boys, and I'm going to go to your statement that you really like, where a yeah. parent said, yeah. or do you want to, I'll let you say No, I, 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 yeah, I will, I will do it, but I'll, the, I, I can remember a tagline from what a parent said, that they dropped off a boy and they picked up a man. And I think that said it all yeah. right there, you know, and that's, and that's, I think that's pretty amazing. Yeah, it really is. Uh, and, you know, I, whether you're a seventh grader or a senior, uh, yeah. you have to make decisions. And the biggest decision to make is how do you get along with other cadets? How do you get along with other people? <laughs> with people. Yeah, with people in general. <laughs> and yeah. that's what I see every day happening with these boys. And some boys come here, they're very timid, shy, don't say a thing, and you're absolutely right. By the time they graduate, wow, it's a totally different person. Yeah. Example, last year, so we had uh, 27 seniors. Six of our seniors last year received either three or four year scholarships, I know. army scholarships to, to high speed low drag universities across the nation. Yes. We what, got a, what percentage of that, Todd, to put it into perspective? 25%. Is it 25%, 25%. got four year it, scholarships? Phenomenal. Yeah. Phenomenal. And two years ago, we had a, a kid who uh, went to West Point, and now he is actually doing commercials for the Army because he just he's a great kid. Right, uh, and I, I call him kid. He's a he's a man. So, but uh, you know what I mean. So, and he was a wrestler. That's another thing we do well here at Fishbowl. <laughs> well, I was going to tell. I was going to ask you. Talk about their curriculum. Talk about okay. the opportunities. Talk about the things that they do because some of it is required. I understand, but then some of it is they can pick and choose. Also, correct. Correct. So. You know, we do have a, what I'll call a, a great curriculum. And the best news is small classes, typically yeah. eight to 12 cadets. And some classes this year have been a little bit bigger. Uh, but, you know, for all those teachers out there, eight to 12 <laughs> students in one class, how awesome is that? Uh, yeah. But the boys get that indiv individualized learning, yeah. which is great. And you have teachers that are over, you know, looking over their shoulder, making sure they're doing the right thing. We brought Chromebooks into the uh, scenario this year where teachers can monitor what the boys, you know, are actually looking at on their computer. They get their lesson plans there. So it's become this collaboration that works. Because boys are going to be boys, right? Yeah. And boys are right. going to test the system. They're going to try right. to do something. If someone's <laughs> going to let them get away with something, they're going to right. try it. Right, right. But here, you can't yeah. hide. You, yeah. Yeah, okay, sometimes you can get away with some stuff, but there's always somebody watching. Yeah. And whether it's an AP class uh, for English or math, uh, the ability for public speaking, uh, that's why I want these boys, and thank you for bringing that up today, let them have that opportunity to, for some public speaking. It's mandatory that all the boys have to play a sport, two sports. And if they don't want to play a sport, then they're up in the weight room. So Something or, or for their, physical activity. Or yeah, they're playing somebody. a musical instrument. Right. right. Uh, we have a great relationship with the Wayne Theater. They're doing our, our arts this year. Yep. It, it's uh, let phenomenal. Me, let, that is our local theater. We're in Waynesboro, and I should have said that to begin with, which is one of my localities in my footprint, but it is a beautifully renovated old theater, the Wayne Theater. Yeah. Oh, really, Sorry, I stopped no, your no, no. thought it, process. It really is, and they just had their uh, ribbon cutting for their uh, Studio Wayne 
about uh, three weeks ago, and it's just a great space. And it's the kind of you know art space where people from all over can come mm-hmm. and be a part of it. Mm-hmm. And another, you know, I didn't appreciate this when I was at AMA, and I know these young men that were up here don't appreciate it right now. You look out, you see the Blue Ridge Mountains. I mean, we are in the best spot. I think we have the best view in all of Waynesboro, too. Yeah. Perhaps the whole valley, but uh, it, it's pretty phenomenal. This is a beautiful that. spot. It, it that really is true. Is. And we are downtown Waynesboro as well. Yes. Yeah, so the boys and the boys that were up here earlier, you know, they're, they're pretty proud of the fact that they're on the color guard. And that's a big deal. And, and as they continue to maneuver through uh, the core, they'll be given additional leadership. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I would say those boys that were up here, that there's probably one, two, I'd say all three, that have aspirations to one day be the battalion commander yeah. their senior year. And that's a big deal. Yes. Or perhaps their junior year be the sergeant major to well, where they had that leadership and they're, they're given the responsibility to lead other cadets. Yes. Well, and I can imagine that that is powerful for a resume as well. Uh, Absolutely. You know, the fact of the type of curriculum that they're getting plus with what you're doing. Right. Uh, you mentioned something. Again, we have such great conversations before we start filming, but you mentioned the partnership with Dynamic Aviation. You want to talk yeah, about that? So- what was it, two, two plus years ago? You yes. and I had this conversation. Yes. Linda Hershey yes. was a part of this as well. Did you um, want to bring Linda in as well as to, 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 yeah, to speak? Get on in here, Linda. Linda. Come on. <laughs> but, uh, Welcome, Linda. <laughs> Your is, cameo appearance. It is a delight to Come be here. here. It really is. And, uh, Introduce you know, yourself. I'm Linda Hershey, and I wear many hats around here. The one I'm most proud of is I am a uh, mother of an alum, and I volunteer down here quite frequently, and I am a trustee with the Fishburne Hudgens Educational Foundation. And it's, a, it's just a pleasure and a delight to have the partnership here today, and even more so to be partnered with Little Debbie's and McKee Foods, because let me tell you, these cadets, gentlemen, you all can verify this, you all love your Little Debbie products. So, uh, and and uh, McKee Foods is great if we, if we need products uh, for the school for an event, they are right there, and they're right there supporting us. So for that, I say thank you. Oh, you're welcome. And, and Linda has been after me to do something here for a while, and for one reason or another, it hadn't happened. And this was, finally was a great idea, and it was able, we were able to do it this time of the year so that we could have cadets here. And I, I will well. tell you a little something on Jay. When we dedicated this building, and Jay is sitting in the audience with me, and he looked over and he saw the the presentation, the cadets, and the formality of it, and uh, just the the whole scenario. He looked at me and he said, "Linda, I wish I'd have had an opportunity to be at a school like this when I was their age." Yeah. And I've never forgotten that day. Yep, so, it was true. It's it was true. true. Yes, I'd yeah. have been a better undergrad student. I know that if I'd have had this kind of discipline. <laughs> uh, you want to talk about the dynamic aviation partnership? Absolutely. Uh, and that, quickly. You in yeah. When you yeah. Need yeah. To. Uh, so I'm checking my watch. Not for Jay for y'all. set us up. You know, you came. It was about two and, a, two and a half years ago. Yeah, two and a half, something like that. And, and we had the meeting, and then you connected me with uh, Anthony Whitehead, who yeah. was just a phenomenal person. And uh, lo and behold, we had it set up. And the first time we had 14 cadets that went to uh, Dynamic Aviation in Bridgewater, yeah. uh, right down the road, about like 25, 30 minutes. And it was great. They, they, they got to get in simulators, flight simulators. Uh, they got to do some uh, electrical you know, connecting and, and just doing really cool things. They got to see the first... Air Force One. Air Force One. Uh, President Eisenhower, yep. for those Columbine. of you who were thinking, yep. hey, who was the first one? So it was yeah. 1952. Uh-huh. Uh, and then they got to go up in an aircraft. And some of them, that was the first time they'd first ever time been they... up in an aircraft. Yeah. And uh, Tyler Dolan, he's an alum. He's a 2018 alum. He didn't like to, he, he came with us that day, and he didn't like to fly. But I, made him, I didn't know this. <laughs> he went up that day, and he, and he told me the second time we went, he said, I really don't want to go up this time. So I didn't make him the next time. Well, <laughs> but you know, this, is, yeah. this is a brilliant program on behalf of Dynamic Aviation because yeah. what they are doing, you know, they're working on these, these folks psychologically because these are 
potential employees and to give exactly. them this exposure and to see what's in their back door and they don't have to leave their community. They can be right here mm -hmm. and secure a great job and, and to see that it can be fun. So, you know, we, we're delighted. We may even get some simulators here. You know, we have we've talked that about dynamic. That was what Todd yeah, was telling it me. Be, it would be great uh, just to, to uh, uh, share more of dynamic with, yeah. with, the, with the Fishburn community. Yeah, we're lo also looking next year uh, to bring in some drone classes. Uh, we brought back the rocketry team. They just went out to Monterey and did a launch. Uh, and, and it's great seeing that. And yes. the boys just love yes. it. And, you know, yes. they sent me an article that they had written, and it's in geek language, but it was so cool because then I could, I, I could get in with them and understood where, where they were yes. coming from. So yes. it was great. But if I may, real quick. To yes, hit, go ahead. To hit Millar. So we're coming up on the fifth yes. anniversary. Please, which that's right. Which it, it is amazing. And, and, you know, we have this great warming kitchen. We have the field house. We have a state-of-the-art weight room. And we have a state-of-the-art conference room. And it's a wonderful facility. And I got to tell you that it was a Russell Hitt, class of 1953, Hitt Construction. Uh, and his son-in-law, Jim Millar, uh, and his wife, Tracy, Tracy was uh, Mr. Russell's daughter, uh, that provided the funds for this. And I got to tell you, our alumni base, our you know, past parents, our, our, our present parents, our friends of Fishburn, wow. They, you know, when they give, they give, and they make a difference yeah. for these boys to gain that Fishburn experience. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Yeah, yeah, we're going to have the, the But, you know, this facility, a lot of folks don't know, Jay, but it is available to rent out for exactly. special events. Conference facilities are, are, are wonderful. Uh, and uh, we can do, how many can we do here for a sit-down? So we can actually sit 500. Yeah. 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 Linda has given me a not-so-subtle hint. Uh, <laughs> about how we can utilize it. But no, you're right, and it's another, it's another asset in addition to the educational facility that is here. You're right. We try we, to take and we care do of it upright because when you come here, you are escorted, ladies, uh, you are escorted <laughs> from your car by a very handsome cadet. So you do get the VIP treatment. Yes. <laughs> Good point. And that goes a long way, let me yes. tell you. So. Yes. Um, I tell you, let me segue to our next guest, okay. and then we will have you back on. Linda, thank you. I appreciate it very Absolutely much. Absolutely my pleasure. Yeah. Thank you. No, you're welcome. And we will finish up right. with the cadets and cadet life, but Todd will be rejoining us. In the meantime, I'd like to bring on now Leanne Wetzel, who is the director of Principal, I'm going to let her describe her multi uh, functions as being the head of the Valley Career and Technical Center because again, we want to celebrate the various educational institutions, but also, and, and Leanne, if you could come this way a little more, there you go, yes, uh, to talk about that. Um, so, tell us about what you know, the Valley Career and Technical, Valley Career Tech, to me, uh, does, and who your audience is and some of the programs that you have. And you can probably talk 20 minutes on that alone, right? I, I can talk all day on, <laughs> on so many things that we're doing and, and so many exciting things our kids are getting to do and our teachers are doing. But uh, um, I'm the director of Center for Advanced Learning, which includes Valley Career and Technical Center as well as uh, our local governor's school. Yeah, uh, and, and that the governor's school, I think, yeah. is an important part of right. this as well. Um, so our, our Career and Technical Center, uh, we target uh, programs for high school students, juniors and seniors, as well as adults. Um, for example, I'll just throw out some examples. I just think about students and stories. Yeah. Um, we had a young man who went into our auto technology program. He graduated uh, two years ago. Uh, he went through, he got some ASE certifications. Uh, his second year, the second half of his senior year, he actually went out and began working at Shenandoah Valley Airport. 
Um, now he is a full-time employee there still. He, once he started working there in high school uh, through our program, he's still employed there. Uh, and we actually took a group out this year and he was the one who showed them around and show, I, I de-ice the planes now. I do this, I do this, I do this. So again, you know, he was showing our current students, you can do this too. Yeah, exactly. Um, and, so, and, I, and I should add, SHD is the Shenandoah Regional Airport, and it is a small, but it is a commercial airport. Yes, yes, it is growing. They are, they, that is growing, it and is they growing. need those yes. kinds of personnel there. Right, and uh, you know, we'll talk a little bit about our aviation technology that we're adding yeah. uh, with uh, with a grant that we have. But uh, we have lots of different programs from the, all the trades. We have agriculture, we have uh, construction, manufacturing. Uh, you know, electricity, healthcare. Uh, we've got some of our, our nursing students ready to go out uh, here uh, to Augusta Health, which is our local hospital here uh, within the next week or so. Uh, so our students are getting both the hands-on as well as the, the, the theory and the knowledge yes. and the real world, uh, in addition to just learning how to be a professional and learning how to be an expert and craftsman at what you do uh, versus just doing it for the sake of getting it done. Experiential, you know, Experiential knowledge learning, yes. is all the talk now. Right. But you really do some things that are in person. And I, one of the things that I can remember the first time I visited mm -hmm. was the construction curriculum and the yes. house that they built. You want to talk absolutely. about that? Sure, us? absolutely. Uh, every year, our uh, carpentry class uh, builds a house and it's a full house uh, and they build it to sell. They auction it off at the mm -hmm. end of the year. Uh, people buy it and then they set it and they're living in this house. Uh, not only do our carpentry students do that, our electricity students help with that, our mm -hmm. HVAC students install That's the right. HVAC. Uh, we've even had some uh, students do some of the computer wiring and things. Um, two years ago during COVID, uh, in lieu of building the house, they actually built some classrooms for us uh, and that's <laughs> what a great opportunity uh, and it, it was really great and they were so excited they came back the next year I want to see them now that they're done yes. you know and so it, it's really a great opportunity we they do a lot of service projects in the community in terms of building uh, but it's a great um, real world practical uh, application of what they do and they can see a tangible result of what their what their efforts are I was talking with Leanne before this, and I said I had to write down all of the different curricula that you had because mm -hmm. you have so many. In addition to the agricultural program, which is very important right. for us here in the Shenandoah Valley, you have the culinary, you have mm -hmm. the information technology, you have the transportation, you mentioned the construction, you mentioned the manufacturing, but the health sciences yes. uh, as well, education and human uh, service, and then public safety as well. And I had I thought I knew what you were doing there, and right. I'm ashamed to say that I actually missed like three or four yeah. of the, those. And it's not just youth that is your audience either. Right. We have a lot of uh, our local folks, particularly in the trade and industries, will come back and do night classes. Uh, businesses will send them back for additional training um, in mm -hmm. pneumatics, uh, hydraulics, PLC programming, uh, you know, electricity, different things, apprenticeships. We have adult apprenticeships. We actually have mm -hmm. about six youth apprenticeships who will be signing up here uh, in the next couple of months who are already, again, starting their career with their with their businesses with a full-time job. Yeah. Uh, so, but we do serve, we also have an adult nursing program. Uh, we also have English uh, classes for non-speaking English folks, uh, particularly with ag. Sometimes we get a lot of our employers that have employees who don't speak English. Mm -hmm. So we have some English classes that uh, we're working to get mm -hmm. out to some of the employees as well. And that's so important for us here in the Valley because our largest private sector employment base, many of you have heard this, but I keep stressing it, is manufacturing, mm -hmm. followed by health care. Right. And then the farm and right. agriculture is a huge component to why food mm -hmm. and beverage is so popular here right. in the area. And so you're really serving it all. Well, and, and right on that 8164 interchange, I think those are always going to be important to this area. Um, and so, you know, 
we've, we're pretty diverse. We offer everything from cybersecurity to machine learning to, to uh, you know, uh, criminal justice. But uh, again, all of those things are going to be uh, important to our yeah. area. You recently got a grant. Yeah, yeah, very exciting. Go Virginia. Go Virginia is a program. It's a state level program. Uh, it was led by the private sector, but it is for innovative in models that we can create at the regional level working together, collaborating. Yeah. I did a very high level. I'll let you talk about oh, okay. the, the grant that you wrote and received. I was fortunate to be able to be early in on what you were doing, a huge yeah. supporter of what you. Well, uh, it, it's been it, it's we'll very exciting, it. and and I think it will really uh, change what we're able to offer both our high school students and our adults in terms of the level of technical skill they have, but also just the opportunity, the new opportunities that's going to bring. So, yeah. uh, the grant really is focused on a couple of areas. One is to update equipment. Uh, in our, our auto and diesel mechanics programs. We have a lot of trucking industries in the areas. Mm -hmm. um, also, our manufacturing, our welding, our precision machining, um, you know, those aspects and those programs as well. Um, and then also to add two new programs. One is the aviation, yes. uh, we talked about earlier, yeah. uh, and the other would be an industrial maintenance, which is really a jack of all trades uh, kind of program uh, to help uh, all of our local industries keep their their equipment running and, and running well. And, and both of those, I've heard, are really needed in this area. I hear it directly yes. from industry. And we've had yeah. a, and just an amazing uh, support and partnerships with our local industry, both to get the grant, but even before that, um, I mean, to get the grant, uh, we had to have a very tight turnaround, and I ask employees or employers uh, very quickly for some letters of support, and within four days, I had 20 letters. Yeah. And it's amazing uh, the collaboration and the partnerships that we have with those uh, employers and uh, how much how supportive they are. Uh, but they they've been a great supporter of us and those programs and getting those programs going. So. Yeah. Well, we're glad to have you on here. You have anything else? Uh, have I missed something that you really would like to? Well, uh, the only thing I would say is just uh, I appreciate uh, your focus on education. I think uh, we're really a hidden gem here in the Valley. Yes. Uh, we have great local public schools. Obviously, you can see and have heard already today that uh, our private schools are also exceptional. Uh, a lot of colleges, a lot of opportunities yeah. for training, continued learning, uh, and continued Continue to elevate um, the levels of, of what we do here in the valley and in a beautiful setting. Um, so again, I, I love it here, and uh, again, I'm really excited about all the great things that we're doing, as well as that are happening across the valley. And I want to thank Fishburn for hosting today. Yes, so. thank you, Leanne. I all appreciate right, it very much. We appreciate what you do because so. you're part of the assets that we sell here to our businesses. So well, thank you very much. Well, thank you, sir. All right, appreciate it. We'll talk to you later. Yes, sir. Oh, it probably Probably won't be that long from now either. Uh, okay, I need Todd and our cadets <laughs> back on. Welcome, gentlemen, again. This is your part of the show. I'm going to let Todd uh, help d direct this, but we thought it would be really good for you to hear sort of about the life of our cadets uh, here. And I say our, because I feel like I'm part of it now, you know. But we'd like to, we'd like to hear from you guys. Uh, All right, time. so to that, you said our cadets. Yes. You know what? The community needs to realize this is the community school. Yep. And if they haven't been to Fishburn, they need to come visit, because we got great kids like this. These boys right here, they're our ambassadors. So when we have open houses or we have uh, groups that come in, these are the young men that are showing them around the school and talking. Yep. And you know what, how refreshing to have, to have boys look you in the eye, shake your hand or whatever's going on and be respectful. So to that, let me transition and be quiet. All right, I want each of y'all, and I'm gonna point, and I want you to kind of talk about your fish burn experience, okay? What makes the fish burn experience? And then I want you to explain something that's on your chest, okay? Yes. So we'll start with Cadet Green. Um, my fish burn experience has been really good. It was uh, difficult at first um, because, you know, you have to fit in, you have to move in, you have to get to know people, and you kind of have to 
get away from home, and it's different. How was that getting away from home? It was a little bit different. I mean, it wasn't too bad. Um, <laughs> after I did that, I helped other people uh, adapt to the school when they got here. And uh, I usually just try to help people when I can. Wow. And and you know what? I believe you because I've seen you do it, and I truly appreciate that. Thanks. Tell me about what's what's going on here. What do you have here? Um, so this is kind of what we're supposed to wear. So it's our name tag and the star. It it kind of reflects. There's different colors of it. We have the best one. It's our school's performance. Um, what was it? The government, right? Comes in and the they junior ROTC, yeah, right? The junior R, uh, JROTC comes in and they inspect our school, and depending on what how good our performance is, they um, they grade us, and that's what color star we have to wear. All right, and you will make sure that stays that color, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so what's this? That's our crest. It's kind of like a, or the face of Fishburn. It's our school motto: "Sentius potestas," which means knowledge is power in Latin, and it's what we live by. All right. Yeah. So you're doing well in school? Yes, sir. Good grades? Yes, sir. All A's. I like hearing that. Uh, that's, a, that's not something I think I ever said. <laughs> 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 All right, Cadet Frankson. So uh, I'm Cadet Frankson. My fish burn experience started this August, and uh, like Green said, he likes to help people out. He was actually the first person who helped me uh, got my press set up and your press is your closet basically oh okay I had not heard that um I have good grades way better than I did at public school uh, that's why I came here because they challenge you more it's mentally and physically challenging and I like that they push you to your limit they they push you farther than you think you can go is that the reason you think you're uh, making better grades yes sir yeah I had a 2.0 GPA going up to a 3.5. I'd say that's a tremendous improvement. That is phenomenal. That's great. But tell me about the rook process. When you first come here, you're a rook. Talk a little bit about what it means to be a rook and going through and kind of what happens. Is it scary? Uh, it's the first few days, it first can be days. scary. Yeah. Um, a rook is a term for a rookie. Uh, it's what you are for the first six weeks. And you got to wear this little booklet that's worn around your neck. And whenever you're in mess hall, you got to hold it like up like this. And you got to keep it in front of your face. And after after the six weeks, you got to do a physical uh, challenge. So it's a five mile, not five mile, three mile march. Then you got to do an obstacle course. And then uh, you got to flip big, big old tires. And in the fall, we actually mud climbed the hill out front. So we soaked that all down, and we had the army crawl up. So that was fun. Was that fun? It was. Yeah. They, yeah. they were a mess. Yeah, they were. It, it took all day to wash their clothes. I, I bet. But you loved it. Okay, yes. so yes. tell me about what you have yes. on each shoulder. So these are called shoulder cord, cords, and these are French tips. I have this one from a Rifle Exhibition, which is uh, spinning rifles. And I am actually the captain of that, Jared T.C. And this is from bands. I play trombone. Uh, it's all marching. It's not a concert because we do parades a lot. And that's actually what this ribbon's from. Uh, is doing three or more parades. Interesting. Okay, now you said spinning rifles. That might not mean anything to our audience. So what exactly is that? So spinning rifles is you have a rifle and like you do different moves with it. Yeah, yeah. This is what people see when they see the color guard come out and, you know, hold them, turn them, and spin them like that, right? Yes, sir. Um, Am I close? A little <laughs> bit. Uh, a little bit? I'm on color guard and okay. pierces. <laughs> so we kind of do less. We step, kinda, step in so okay. you can be seen. There we kind of do more fancier. They do, like, show showing. So, like, okay. they spin the rifles, like, like clockwise, counterwise, and they throw them behind their backs. So you're calling him a show-off? Well, I like to show off. Yeah, he likes to show off. <laughs> See, and I love this because they're not shy about, no, let me explain this to you. And that's the way it, it should be. I appreciate that very much. Yeah. So, right, are you through? So you're, okay, good job. So, uh, yeah, good. Go ahead and hold it up. Yeah, you can hold it. All right. So my fish, burn, it my fish burn experience has been 
a great experience for me. It really helped me in the long run. Helped me with a lot of my classes, a lot of my grades, becoming a better person. And with public school, it's a large classes. You have a lot of people in your class, and the teacher can always focus on you to help. So it's kind of a difficulty for me to get my grades up. But now at Fishburn, there's smaller class sizes, more people to help, and there's more of a a, a brother bonding among other people to help you. So let me yeah. talk about that real quick. So yeah. we also have a mandatory study hall. So talk about how the how is the study hall helping you with your grades? Study hall really helps because it it not necessarily forces you to study, but it definitely helps you study to where you're not missing out on certain pieces of, of information from your class or maybe you miss something, you can go to that teacher and get get help with that. All right. So Transition now, so what is this? This is what we call a tab, and it corresponds to our ribbons and cords. So if you do a specific activity like rappelling, it's when you go off the side of a building using ropes. Have you um, done that already? Yeah. Yes, sir. Are you any good? Mm-hmm, yes, sir. Were you scared? <laughs> a little bit, it's a little scary, <laughs> but. And yeah, that that's oftentimes really helps you do things better when you're a little scared about approaching some of this stuff. And then one thing I didn't ask, any of y'all, what's your rank right now? Uh, I'm a sergeant. I'm kind of in charge of the middle schoolers. What do you mean, kind of, or you are? <laughs> well, I am because <laughs> okay, uh, I'm the highest ranking of them all. Okay. So I make sure that they're in check. Make sure so you're they have the highest every, ranking. Okay. I make yeah. sure that they're all, they have all their uniform articles on and they're doing the right thing. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I'm a corporal, which is the lowest NCO, but we still help out around barracks. And one of the pluses is you get its cool belt. <laughs> okay, so talk about That's the belt buckle. Is, yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. It. It, it represents, uh, I wouldn't say leadership, but it definitely gives you, it represents rank. Okay. So you don't get this as a private, but Pierce is going up for corporal soon. So do they just give you the rank or do you have to earn you gotta it? You got to do this thing called like a promotion board. Promotion board. So how's that? So you walk into this room with your leaders in front of you and they ask you a bunch of military-based questions uh, like a 15-count manual arms or... Wait a minute, say that again. 15-count manual arms. 15-count manual Well, If I had a rifle, well, I still remember that from when I was in military school. Okay, okay. So. See, I'm, I'm, this is new to me, so... Yeah, go ahead. Sorry to interrupt. Um, so after you do your 15 count, they ask you a bunch of questions, and you got to write this one-page essay. Um, I'm pretty sure it's like 500 words. And um, they read that out, and they ask you questions on it. And if you pass the board, uh, you get ranked up. And if you, if you don't, you get to try again. Was it fair? It's... A it's yeah, it's, it's, it could be fair. It could be unfair sometimes. So. They give you they give it, you time to study. Yeah. Yeah. It's only unfair if you make it unfair for yourself. Yes. yes is that is. what you were trying to say? Yes, sir. Okay, that's yeah. what I thought. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, over to Cadet Pierce. So I'm a private first class, which is kind of beginning off. It's one of the ranks you get. So when you break out from being a rookie, uh, you either get private or private first class. I was fortunate enough to get private first class. Uh but is right below corporal and it's kind of a step towards being more of a leader and becoming an nco all right yep. you have someone else that you were threatening to introduce to a former alum would you like to join us yeah and, so and i and guys i would love for y'all to ask him some questions you know all right so his life here with that so while tyler comes up so tyler, come on up tyler tyler dolan class of 2018 graduate here of fishburn Works in uh, he works in the office, the advancement office, and he was Thank responsible yes, to go over to the mess hall, uh, to go pick up. Did we say monkey bread? Is that what we ended up? Uh, no, I was told we couldn't call it monkey bread. Okay. It is pull apart bread. Pull apart. I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, pull apart bread. So Tyler, a uh, little bit about yourself, where you're from, and how many years you went here, and then. And while you're doing that, I'm going to get this out and put it right here. And then I'm going to give, I'd love Jay's idea, to give uh, them a chance to ask you questions. Yes, yes. I, I'm sorry we're setting no, you up it's here. Okay. It's all good. I can't, in, couldn't resist. Uh, Tyler Dolan. I'm from Waynesboro, Virginia. Grew up in Waynesboro. Went to Waynesboro High School for two years. Came here as a sophomore. I reclassed. 
So I was, did high school for five years. Um, graduated, went to Radford University. Graduated from there in 2022. Uh, got my bachelor's in sports management. And now I am back at Fishburn. Uh, coach football, obviously working in the advancement office. Uh, assistant athletic director, started that over the summer. And so Fishburn, Fishburn was pretty good for you. Huh? It was good. Would you say that? Uh, yeah, I would say so. Um, I was at Waynesboro. I would say my grades weren't the best there. Uh, came to Fishburn, they gave me a second chance. I don't think with without Fishburn, I wouldn't be, I guess, where I'm at right now. Yeah. Wouldn't be, wouldn't have gone to college. I don't think. <laughs> so. Yeah. And you wouldn't have met me. Yeah. Wouldn't have <laughs> met Todd. That's right. All right. All right. So to that, so, yes. let's go ahead. Sorry, I, I'm interrupting you left and right. No, 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 so no. I no. Oh, I, yeah, this is the program. Okay. I'm just getting this. Go out. ahead and ask questions. So, um, what rank? Can I just, uh, what rank and position did you graduate as? Uh, so my senior year, I graduated as the Alpha XO. Oh. <laughs> Do I have any other? Uh, what was the most challenging thing while you were here? So y'all call it Rook now as being a rat. Uh, when I first started being a rat, did not like it whatsoever. <laughs> I went home every day, tell my parents how much I did not like Fishburn. <laughs> And uh, yeah, but, you know, looking back, honestly, yeah, yes, yeah. right. Telling them I wanted to go back to Waynesboro just because of being a rat. It was not not fun at all. But now looking back on it, I think it's some of my better times. Obviously, in high school. Come on, ask them some hard questions. Yeah, Pierce, you well, got a question? they, they've lost attention yeah, uh, for I you because they, they the see this. Y'all want to y'all want to get a part of this? See <laughs> what you think of it. That's good. It smells good. Good guys, guys, you helped make it. And there it is. It's that simple. Uh, go ahead. Ask, ask him something hard before we, we Pierce, wrap up here. Ask the question. Now, Cadet Pierce, I didn't say this. He's from Annapolis. So Long he, way from home. <laughs> but um, how was, like, did you have a lot of emotional support from Fishburn? From Fishburn? Yeah, I mean, Colonel Gunn, which I know now is uh, he's your counselor. Um, I would say he's a big, important reason I stayed. Um, he knew I didn't like it. <laughs> um, talked to him almost every day, tell him how much I didn't want to be here. He was also my middle school PE teacher, so I knew him coming in. Um, but yeah, he was big, big reason I stayed, and he was a big backbone while I was here. <laughs> Anything else? You want to ask him a question? <laughs> so when you look at these cadets today and compare them to when you were here, do they have it easier or do they have it harder? Uh, I would say when I first started, I, I thought, it was, I don't know how they see it now, but a lot of the seniors were big, scary seniors. Um, I don't know. Now I feel like they're a little bit smaller, maybe because I'm older. So maybe they're not as scary. scary. So I, don't, I would say a little bit easier, but I think Fishburne overall, I mean, it's tough, but I mean, that's what gets you through Help yourself. Help yourself. and creates oh, the yeah. brotherhood yeah. that you yeah. walk away with. We're going to wrap it up. Thank you guys. Yes, sir. All of you. Really appreciate you helping. You did a great job. It is good. And it's so easy to, to make. Really appreciate, Todd, what you and Fishburn do here. Yes, guys, you can step on in and get <laughs> some bread. I've cut it. That's what it's for. You help make it. Um, Thank you for joining us. This is something that we think is really important in the way that the, the region, you know, sort of collaborates. We have a lot of assets, but we support, you know, particularly our educational assets here. And we think it's important. That's part of what makes us successful here uh, is that we do have the diverse um, institutions here that help us. Um, we will be back to you uh, probably in May, I think we already have an idea of where we're going. We're going to a different establishment. It'll be sort of celebrating our agricultural uh, roots here, and you'll be hearing more about that. But we hope you enjoyed it. We hope you enjoy this recipe. It is so easy, and it's so good. Uh, this will disappear as soon as we get off camera. <laughs> uh, I don't think I'm missing anything, and if, but if you have any questions, please, you know where to reach us at uh, Shenandoah Valley Partnership. And thanks for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you the next time. See y'all. Everybody wave. Thanks, guys. Bye, guys. Couldn't have done Bye. it without you. <laughs> Bye.